I'm Mark Unger, producer of Roundtable. Because we find this presentation so special, we really would like for you to see this. Please watch. Good evening and welcome to Single Shot Show at Manhattan Neighborhood Network's uh, Roundtable. Tonight we're going to be discussing the uh, relationship of photography with mixed media. It's a long established relationship virtually from the very start of uh, photography and uh, it was creating some astonishing results and right now it's uh, really something that becoming to be a very big and very serious part of uh, photography's media and uh, in order to talk about this phenomena, we invited uh, Burgess Alvarez, mm -hmm. uh, an artist creating beautiful masterpieces. I'm not even Thank sure you. how to define them. I presume the final result is painting, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, which have a very serious part of the process uh, uh, being photography. So hello Burgess and thank you very much for joining us tonight. Well, I would actually like to thank you for uh, having me on this evening. And I appreciate your work and your, what you do. And it's a very important um, aspect of communicating with other artists and putting the word out. And that's a, a wonderful thing that you, uh, that you do here. Absolutely. Sharing uh, beautiful work our guests are doing is yes. exactly what the show is about. But yes. let's talk about yours. You have a sure. truly fascinating process. And uh, as I understand, uh, if we would boil it down to stages, it's originated as a somewhat three-dimensional sculpture made of thin layers of plastic, which is photographed and then converted into a painting. So can you tell me a little more? Sure, of course. I utilize um, materials that have lost a lot of their um, initial intent mm -hmm. and their um, processing materials that have kind of uh, um, elapsed and they're no longer useful. Mm -hmm. And what I'm interested in doing is actually taking that material, repurposing it, recycling, reusing it, reformatting it, and changing, changing it, transforming mm -hmm. it into a beautiful art form. So I slowly gather material, you know, I collect material, packaging materials, cellophane, things that um, are shiny, bright. I collect m many materials, uh, specifically packaging. And my wife actually goes crazy because she doesn't want to <laughs> do any of that. And she's like, what are you doing? And I'm filling up the house with all of this material. And slowly, I kind of um, collect it and place it. I make like a, um, a, a diagram or a, uh, a panorama. I use support structures, I'll use boxes, and um, even like the cellophane that you get from when you give a bouquet of flowers to mm -hmm. your girl, the, this cellophane is shiny and bright, and actually we just toss that away, and I, I can't seem to do that. Wow, that's actually very interesting on its own. Uh, I didn't know that you have philosophical premise uh, to the materials that yes. originate the work. That's, Basically, that's a big um, a draw that, that it's yeah. such a beautiful product exactly. and it took so much time to make and we just kind of toss it away. Well, I actually originally came in from culture which had very uh, little disposable products and they was actually quite valuable. Yes. Believe it or not, at certain times in Soviet Union people would rewash their plastic yes, bags. Yes, for sure. And reuse. There's so much waste and we can't. We have to change the way we think yeah. about things. Absolutely. And if you think about it, it's actually uh, the true testament to uh, human ingenuity, the fact that we have those things and they're so accessible and affordable and we definitely should be more careful and more conscious about them. So sure. uh, once this installation is created, you are photographing it, as I understand. Yes. 
I'm actually re-energizing it. I'm uh -huh. putting energy back into the material, even though its function has stopped in one way. It actually begins in another way. And I've ex uh, taken this material and through different angles and different um, positioning, I'll rearrange and I'll start photographing. And within the little thin, um, torn edges, the folded edges, I find these beautiful landscapes of ocean and mountains. And I was amazed, really, at this process. And I, I continued further and obtaining different um, materials, building different uh, scapes, and capturing them, that one single moment. As many of your guests say, you know, you've got to capture the light in a certain way. It Same has thing. to be that moment in time or that golden moment where the sun goes down mm -hmm. and you capture this beautiful image. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm waiting. The, the material may fold or fall. The light may be casted on it and it creates this beautiful image. So from what you just said, I understand that your preference is natural light. Uh, yes, I do. I, um, I'll do this over an, uh, an open window mm -hmm. and that light will reflect down on the material. It'll start producing different layers and, and shining off of a different material. The more material I add, you think that placing something here wouldn't do anything. But no, it does. Actually, the more I build, the more detail the image is, uh, is obtained is obtained within the image. Uh -huh. So that's interesting too. So oh, it's so a whole fun. process. And I get captured and involved in it. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. I enjoy it so much. That's the best part. Wow, I totally can see what to enjoy. Absolutely. And as I understand, uh, once uh, the photograph is created, uh, then it's digitally manipulated. Yes. Then I'll uh -huh. take out that, um, that single <laughs> shot and out of many, and I'll reposition an angle, but it's that one single shot that your show <laughs> talks about. Exactly. And I just think that's wonderful. That's the money shot, and it's like the one that, that captures the beauty of the whole process. And I'll take that image and restructure it, uh, give it a little bit more detail uh, digitally on the, on the computer and add or uh, subtract, maybe crop a little bit, make it tighter, make it neater. And, and from there, then I, I send it out, just yeah. like we would um, any type of photograph. Mm -hmm. But what I've truly done is photographed this material that's collapsing and just, just has given itself up. It has exhausted itself. Uh -huh. And what I've done is recreated it in another manner. To, um, to produce this new... Uh, and the next step, once uh, the three-dimensional image is converted to two-dimensional image, and then you basically edit a little bit of your own vision That's to the right. reality of the you photographed. After that, uh, actually the painting part comes in. Yes, and then I'll bring it, I'll get it back, and then of course I'll touch it up. I'll get uh, more sharper edges to it. Huh? I'll create more detail to it. I'll um, uh, add more material, a different material, more acrylic, more um, paint, more oils, more um, pastels, pencils, pens. And I will go back and actually forge into the material, into the canvas, more, more detail. Oh, uh the natural question, since we are the show about photography, so how much is of original photograph is uh, uh, remaining in the end? The uh, photography is a main aspect of it. I'm using this as a tool to re, um, reconstruct this material, transform this material into a whole new art form. And it's a type of photo to art type of, um, you know, balance that, uh, that I use and play with. But of course, photography plays a major part of, of the process. Oh, that's truly a fascinating process and I can't have to 
wonder what happens with those materials after they photograph. Oh yes, well I keep them for sure. <laughs> I don't want to throw them out. And furthermore, I uh, reuse them and I reconstruct. And it's funny, I'll, I'll, I'll change one green for a blue or a yellow or a, you know, a different type of color and I will get a completely different uh, new look. Oh, actually you're uh, one of those photographers who uh, believe in modifying the photos and I don't know if you noticed n or not but it's one of the biggest controversies we constantly Half. circling back to the sh uh, on the show some yes. photographers believe that photograph supposed to be based on purity of the image on out of the camera principle and mm. some like yours truly for one believe that uh, we do have our artistic license and liberty for it yes and, and everything's you know. changing, the technology is just changing, we've got to keep yes. up with it, really. Yes, absolutely, and uh, it's actually interesting that in uh, creating the mixed media, the uh, manipulation of the photograph plays an integral part. Oh, so we will uh, get back to uh, talking about mixed media after this Sounds break. Good. Hello, this is Alex IG uh, from Single Shot with the next uh, single trick. Today we're going to be talking about uneven lighting. More often uh, you have to deal with just one strong source of light. The strongest one of course would be the sun. And uh, when it happens, uh, half of your object is uh, lit in very brightly and another half is very dark. Just like my face right now. Is there anything you can do about it? Sure. You can uh, have professional lighting equipment, you can have professional light bouncing uh, screens and many other things. But uh, the simplest and easiest uh, thing you can use, especially if uh, you're doing it in a uh, casual environment, is a regular piece of paper. Put it right against uh, the direction of light and you will get the uh, source of light uh, uh, balanced and your light uh, being just right. We're back and uh, we was talking about mixed media so now we probably can steer towards uh, talking about the role of photography in mixed media in general. So uh, as I said mixed media existed as a concept since times before times. Probably one of the very first examples was actually sculptures in uh, ancient Greece. Not a lot of people know that there was two people who created them. Mm -hmm. One was a sculptor and another one is actually a professional painter who would paint them. Mm -hmm. None of this paint remained, but that's where probably the concept of mixed media started and collaboration of the artists started. Mm -hmm. So uh, 21st century is indeed time of mixed media and uh, time of uh, the borders between uh, different medias which was pretty rigid up until now mm -hmm. starting to wash out and technology as we mentioned before plays right. an integral role in it. Yes, you know that mixed media are more components with, um, with paint and, um, and acrylics and um, oils and, um, and putting in cloth and material and adding almost like a collage mm -hmm. of materials into a canvas and creating this beautiful uh, artwork. What I do is slightly different. I'm using the, mm -hmm. the materials, these mixed media type of materials. It's cloth, it's tissue, it's plastic, it's cellophane. Mm -hmm. And I'm, ca I'm capturing it on uh, digitally and then placing it on a canvas. So that kind of gives it like a, a different type of um, look to it. I find that um, 
also there are found objects. Mm -hmm. And many um, artists use found objects and create these beautiful, elaborate um, Absolutely. Uh, sculptures. And they place these found objects in certain ways and produce also another form of, uh, of art uh, works. Mm -hmm. But I find that um, what I do in, in using, it's, it's a thin line between the found objects and the actual mixed media. And I've kind of put them both together, I think. Yes, absolutely. And I'm using these uh, products in making this, uh, this art. Well, uh, your art is actually a fine example of uh, something that uh, recently became possible, if you think about it. The mixed media, which is mixed, not in its physical form, but in a chronological perspective of its creation. Right. Up until, uh, again, recently, the mixed media was mostly uh, associated with uh, objects added to painting. That was probably the most mainstream right. application of the term. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is happening with your work is actually it's mixed in time, not in space. Yes. yes. That's true. That's so, funny. But, uh, uh, it's actually very interesting also that uh, photography is kind of in the middle of the process again. Mm -hmm. It's usually photography is either in the beginning or in the end. Mm -hmm. But this is in the middle and I've captured this, uh, this beautiful scene and I, I put it together on a canvas and then from there I add more actual, actually mixed media into it. It's very uh, interesting. I've, I have had a lot of interest actually in it. People see it and they're like, how did, how did he do that, you know? And it brings, because it, it isn't abstract in a, in a form, because really it's, um, it's landscape, it's sky, it's mm -hmm. ocean. And that draws me, that, that landscape, that seascape. So it isn't an abstract type of form, um, nor is it a traditional type of form of uh, painting. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to the past. It's a, pr it's a combination and you can see the folds and the lines and the layers and they kind of, uh, people actually start looking at these images and they wonder how, how is this done because there's a shine to it, there's a, um, there are many details in it. Uh, not alone do you see a, a landscape, you also start to see details and making out different folds and blending and you could actually see far more. And yes, people are absolutely. always very um, interested and fascinated, really. Yeah, they I they ask me, how, how is it? How is it that he did that, you know? Well, wow, that actually brings us to another interesting phenomenon that became uh, very important in the modern art world, uh, explaining what the art actually is. Yes. Because uh, 21st century is characteristic uh, with uh, very complex pieces of art created with elaborate processes and sure. a lot of background that actually is not in the visual you just see. Yes. Like in your case, uh, the environmental and philosophical component of materials involved. Mm -hmm. So uh, it actually brings us to another controversy that is pretty big right now in our <laughs> world, whether you should let people to just look at it and decide what they see in it, or you have to provide them with elaborate explanation, basically no. making it even further mixed media, no. mixed with literature in a way. No, you should allow them to see it, enjoy it, and, and make uh, what they make of it to, to be, you know? Well, it's indeed uh, part of art. Everybody who sees it supposed to have their own understanding and perception, but mm -hmm. on the other hand, there is a danger that uh, a spectator would actually lose a lot of uh, the meaning of the work without having uh, an explanation. An explanation. Yes, yes, you're right. I agree. I can uh, give you the example of uh, the Black Square of Malevich. It's not a recent work, but it's still mm -hmm. pretty modern in its concept. Mm -hmm. Originally, it was actually uh, not just a manifestation of nothingness as everybody thinks. Originally it was right. manifestation of defiance of religion. Because uh -huh. uh, in the very first time it was displayed, it was placed uh, in a specific corner oh, where right. an icon in Russian culture would be placed. So that's people right. who would enter the room 
right. would look where they expect to see an image of God and instead of this they will see this huge big nothing. Right. So uh, without this explanation, without the context, it right. doesn't have the same meaning. Right. And people don't value it as much. Once you give them a little bit more detail, more background exactly. about it, exactly. then they truly uh, do start to appreciate it much more. Oh, and again, they have, thanks to the technology, a lot of vehicles through which we can uh, actually provide this uh, mm -hmm. information. Social media became to be a vehicle where you can actually not just show but explain what For you sure. mean. For sure, yes, I agree. Uh, social media and um, the environment, there are so many um, um, aspects to the art. It brings up uh, recycling, it brings up the uh, protecting the environment, it brings up our social um, aspects of accumulating too many things, too many objects, creating too many objects, you know. When, when a, um, a viewer actually sees this type of art, it makes them start to think about themselves and reflecting ab ab of themselves. They see that the material is being transformed. Yes. And we in ourselves look towards our past, look towards our history. And we kind of sometimes have to evolve and change and transform ourselves into something different and maybe a little better. And we want that, that um, that striving to, to be good and we have that good and bad history and we always strive to change and transfer ourselves into something better. Oh, it's actually a very interesting uh, component of uh, your process and the modern art in general it's in many ways uh, became to be very issues oriented. Mm -hmm. That's so true. we will probably have a few words about it after the break, okay. but uh, definitely worth mentioning for a few minutes. Sounds good, thank you. Hi, Alex AG again from Single Shot with uh, another one, another single trick. Today I want to tell you about uh, using internal flash of the camera. Um, even some very professional cameras have that, but uh, if you would ask a professional uh, photographer, including myself, you would be told not to use it, especially on close-ups and especially when you're photographing people. Reason being, uh, when you do it, the face being overblown. You're getting practically a white face instead of uh, having nice skin tones and nice lighting. Is there anything you can do about it? Actually, yes, there is. You can just put in front of your flash a simple dollar bill and take a picture. What, will, uh, what it will give you? Uh, dollar bill is made of material thick enough to control enough light and on top of it, it will give you some nice yellow tone to complement the skin tones of the person. This is a uh, single trick by single shot. Watch us on YouTube. So we have only a few minutes left and so much to talk about and there was one thing I actually wanted to touch uh, before we finish this conversation and it's related to uh, your photographic component of the process. As I understand you had a very unusual way uh, of actually being trained in photography which complemented a lot. Uh, no. Sure. I'm, a, um, I'm into radiology. Mm -hmm. uh, my field is medicine. And really, um, I'm an x-ray technologist. I'm okay. a radiographic technologist. I take, um, take x-rays of, you know, patients. And that has always been a part of my uh, past where it's an art form, radiology, uh -huh. I feel. 
is an art form in its own. And that has also uh, changed in the years. I've been practicing for a very long time, and, um, and I've seen all the changes within the, uh, the field of medicine, and particularly in radiology. And what I do is really position the patient. I turn the patient. I, I angle the, the x-rays. I'll angle the, the, the structures and change them to, to produce a certain type of um, a position within our radiographic parameters. So I'm actually uh, involved in this process all of my life. Uh, you know, it, it isn't really photography, but I am taking wow. photographs. Well, it's actually a very interesting field of photography. We probably wouldn't have an opportunity to speak with another person who actually took x-ray photographs of this yes. program anytime soon, and yes. it's fascinating. It One, is. One thing it actually uh, probably gave to you is ability to think three-dimensionally when you're creating those uh, installations and choosing the angle. Yes. Because you actually was thinking three-dimensionally without even seeing the object sure. on what would be the most revealing angle for this particular uh, right. part of the body. And you've got to get the angle correct and the position of the patient correct and in order to get the, the proper detail that is necessary to, to help them get better, you know? Yes, absolutely. So that, that has helped me evolve and train, and that, that always has my interest. Well, in, that's uh, definitely a fascinating way to come to photography. Definitely the first on this program. <laughs> it's oh, true. It is also truly fascinating. Now, uh, I guess that that's it for us today, tonight. Thank you very much, Burgess. Thank it was you. really a pleasure. It. It was Beautiful heart, and uh, I guess that's what we need very to do good. as photographers Thank reveal you. the invisible and make it beautiful. Uh, definitely, I agree. Thank you so much for Thank this you wonderful and opportunity. Good luck with the visit. Thank, Thank you. you. I hope you found that worth watching as much as I did. I'm Mark Unger for Roundtable. Thanks for watching.